A sister says, how to deal with a careless, unromantic husband without being sinful. This needs a counseling session, <laughs> unfortunately. See, a lot of the sisters neglect that the nature of men is different than the nature of women. These are from Mars and these are from Venus, as they say. Though they have two arms, two legs, a head, usually a head, hopefully, um, but they're different in nature. The guys, when they sit together, they speak about everything except their emotions. They speak about cars, real estate, their work, how much they earned, what they bought, what they sold, but never talk about their inner feelings. While women talk about nothing except such relationships. So-and-so divorced his wife. So-and-so got married to a second wife. So-and-so betrayed her husband. So-and-so did this and did that. My husband forgot my birthday, our anniversary. My husband did not know when my first child was born, etc. All of these things, this is how they think. Women are emotional by nature. And this causes a lot of conflict between the spouses. When they, when they fail to understand the nature of the other party. The happiest of husbands is that person who always remembers and anticipates and always has the upper hand. So he always texts his wife, I miss you, I love you. He always remembers that her sister's wedding is next week and he takes the necessary preparations and buys this necessary gifts and remembers such important events. And the best of wives is that wife that overlooks when her husband forgets that they've been married for so long. So many wives give a placement test, a quiz on the spot. Which year were we married in? I don't know. It it's, feels like a couple of centuries, if you ask me. But, uh, why are you answering in such a fashion? It is. I've been married to her for more like 200, 300 years. She, uh, she's so old that when she was born, rainbows were in black and white. Achi, you're not allowed to say th such things. Yeah, but it's funny. It's funny for you. It's funny for the guys. It's not funny for her. So we have a problem in communication. Once each party knows how to communicate and how to overlook. And this is an important issue in Islam, known as at meaning to look the other way. Not every single word that comes out of your, your, your wife's mouth, you have to interrogate and know the intent behind it. Move on. Shrug your shoulders and move on. Likewise, you don't have to question every gesture your husband had done. And what did he mean when he said so and so in front of your father or your mother? And why didn't he do this and why didn't, did he do that? Life does, uh, does not go on like this. Marriage cannot continue healthy in such an environment. So if your husband is careless, if he's not romantic, do what you have to do to change him positively. You have two courses of action. One, lecturing, reprimanding, blaming, 
pointing the finger, you did this, why didn't you do that? And you keep on nagging him until he either divorces you or chooses a second wife because this is not healthy. The second course of action can be that you deal with him in a positive way. If he's not romantic, be romantic without waiting for a response. So if he comes on a special night, it's nice to have candlelight dinner. And he would notice, maybe he would not comment now or in the fifth time or in the tenth time, but he notices and enjoys what he sees. If you buy him a gift, if you put a rose on his pillow, if you cook him good meals and always be presentable in how you look, applying body lotions, perfumes, wearing your hair in a nice and tidy way, putting a nice dress on, he'll notice this. And after a while, he'll enjoy, he would be enjoying it. And after a while, he would be forced to reciprocate, whether you tell him or not. But it would always be shameful for him not to brush his teeth, not to comb his hair, not to take a shower before any kind of intimacy, not to wear new clothes, not to be romantic. And, buy, and soon, inshallah, you'll find that he's texting you, that he's buying you gifts because you initiated the process. But when we start the blaming game, you did not do this to me when I did that to you, and you have a record book. On the 5th of January, I bought you a bottle of perfume. On the 12th of February, I did this to th and that before Valentine's Day, because we don't uh, celebrate Valentine. On March, on, on April, and you have a list of everything you had done. You didn't do anything. A'udhu Billah. What kind of a marriage is this? Such interrogation, such nagging is not healthy. And living in depression is not healthy either. When you start to regret, why did I marry this guy? He's so careless. He's unromantic. He is rude. He doesn't know how to use diplomacy and use beautiful words. His jokes always hurt me and insult me. And you live inside of your own shell, depressed. This is not healthy. Not for you, not for the marriage, not for the children. So you have to come out of your shell and you have to look at the bigger picture. You have to try and work on yourself and your lowest self-esteem. You have to think positive of yourself and overlook so many of these trivial issues and do whatever you do for the sake of Allah, seeking the pleasure of Allah and you will see the difference, inshaAllah Azza wa Jal.